In this video I'm going to show you how to create a bootable macOS Ventura recovery USB on a PC running Windows. You can use this USB to install macOS on a compatible PC or on a real Mac. The PC I'll be using in this video is running Windows 10 but the steps are basically identical for Windows 11. Links to all of the programs used will be down in the video description. First, since we'll be using a Python script to download macOS, we need to download and install Python. Go to python.org forward slash downloads forward slash windows, scroll down and click on download windows installer 64 bit. Once it's downloaded, open your downloads folder and double click on the icon to run the installer. Make sure to put a check in the box labeled add python.exe to path and then click install now. Once the installation's finished, you'll see a message saying setup was successful and you can click close to exit the installer. Now for Windows to be able to find the Python executable, we need to disable the app execution aliases. Type manage app execution aliases into the Windows search box and click the link on the best match to run it. You'll see Python and Python 3 listed. Click the button next to each one to turn off the aliases and then you can close the window. Now we need to download GIB macOS. This is a Python utility that we'll be using to download macOS directly from Apple. Go to the GIB macOS GitHub page which will be linked down below. Click on the green button labelled code and then select download zip. Once it's downloaded go to your downloads folder. Right click on the zip file and select extract all. Click Browse, select your desktop in the pane on the left, click Select Folder and then click Extract. This will extract all of the files into a new folder on your desktop. Now we need to download OpenCore. We'll be using this to create the bootable USB. Go to the OpenCore GitHub page linked in the video description and click under Releases on the right. Scroll down to Assets and click on the link for the latest release version. At the time of making this video, that's 0.9.4. Once it's downloaded, go to your downloads folder, right click the icon and select extract all in the menu. Then click browse, select your desktop in the pane on the left and click select folder. Click in the path box, add backslash open core to the end of the path and then click extract. This will extract all of the files into a new folder called open core on your desktop. Now we're going to download the macOS Ventura recovery image. Run command prompt by typing cmd into the Windows search box and clicking run as administrator. This will open a new command prompt window. Now double click the open core folder on your desktop, then go to utilities and then Mac recovery. Click into the address bar to highlight the path and then press Ctrl and C to copy it. Now in the command prompt window type cd space and then press ctrl and v to paste the path you just copied. Hit enter and you'll be in the mac recovery folder. Now to begin the download we need to type macrecovery.py hyphen b mac hyphen 4b682c 642b 45593 e hyphen m followed by 17 zeros and then the word download. I'll put this full command down in the video description so you can just copy and paste it. Hit enter and the macOS image will begin downloading. This will take a few minutes. Once it's finished you'll see a message saying image verification complete and you'll find a new folder under Mac recovery called com.apple.recovery.boot. This folder contains the macOS Ventura recovery image in DMG format and a chunk list. Now it's time to create the bootable USB using the image we just downloaded. Open the GIP macOS folder on your desktop and look for a file called makeinstall.bat. There are two files called makeinstall, one Python script and one batch file. Make sure that you choose the one that has Windows batch file as the type. Right click on the file and select run as administrator. A new command prompt window will open and you'll be asked to select which disk you wish to use. Here I've got three disks listed. My two SSDs are listed as disk 0 and 2 
and my USB drive is listed as disk 3. So I type 3 and press enter. Now you'll be asked if you want to continue. Make sure that you have the right disk selected and that there's nothing on it that you want to keep. Once you're satisfied, type Y and hit enter. The USB drive will be formatted and a message will appear asking you to paste the path to the recovery image. Open the open core folder on your desktop, then go to utilities, then Mac recovery and then com.apple.recovery.boot. Right click on the file called base system.dmg and select properties. Then click the security tab, highlight the full path next to object name and press Ctrl and C to copy it. Then close the window and switch back to the command prompt. Press Ctrl and V to paste the path, then press enter and make install will begin to create the USB. This will take a while to complete so just be patient. Once the USB has been created it will also automatically install open core onto the FE partition of the USB. Once it's finished you can press enter and then close the command prompt window. And that's it the USB has been created. If you're going to be using the drive to reinstall macOS on a real Mac then you can just eject the drive now and use it right away. But if you're going to be using it for a Hackintosh then you need to create a working EFI folder for your hardware before we can use it. To do this we'll be using Open Core Auxiliary Tools or OCAT for short. Go to the OCAT GitHub page which I'll link down below and click on releases on the right. Scroll down and click on OCAT underscore win64.zip. Once it's downloaded open your downloads folder, right click on the icon and select extract all. Then click browse, select your desktop in the pane on the left and then click select folder. Now click extract and the files will be extracted to the OCAT win64 folder on your desktop. Now it's time to run OCAT and create our EFI folder. Open the OCAT folder and scroll down until you find the OC Auxiliary Tools application. Double click on the icon and you'll see a Windows Defender message saying that Defender stopped an unrecognized app from running. To bypass this click more info and then click run anyway. Once OCAT opens click on the icon on the far right labeled configuration templates. A window will pop up with a link labeled Intel CPU configuration template. Click on this link to open the configuration templates web page in your browser. Now click on the plist icon and you'll see a list of pre-configured templates for various hardware setups. Scroll through this list until you find one that most closely matches your hardware. In my case I'm going to be using this USB to install Ventura on a PC with a 4th gen Haswell CPU. So I'm going to select desktop 4th gen Haswell iMac 15.1.plist. After opening the link click the download button at the top of the window labeled download raw file. This will save the plist to your downloads folder. Now you can switch back to OCAT, go to the file menu, click open, navigate to your downloads folder, select the plist you just downloaded and click on open. This will open the new plist in OCAT. You may see a red exclamation mark because of some missing keys. But if you just click the save icon OCAT will automatically add those missing keys and the errors should disappear. Now go to the edit menu and select generate EFI on the desktop. There are a couple of texts SMC processor and SMC super IO that aren't in the OCAT database but we can add those texts ourselves manually. First though we need to choose a new SM BIOS definition. MacOS Ventura is only compatible with Macs from 2017 onwards. So the iMac 15.1 definition that came in the plist isn't going to work since it's from 2015. To access the SM BIOS definition click on the icon labeled PI on the left. Click the arrow next to system product name to bring up a list of the systems. And I'm going to select iMac 19.2. This is the 2019 model so it should allow us to install Ventura without any issues. To generate a serial number click on the button labelled generate. Then highlight the serial number and copy it with Ctrl and C. In your web browser go to checkcoverage.apple.com, paste the serial number into the box, complete the capture 
click send and make sure that the serial number isn't already in use. If it comes up with a valid purchase date, then you need to generate a new serial number and try again. This one doesn't appear to be in use so we can leave it as is. Now you can also click the generate button next to ROM. Now if you click kernel on the left, you'll see a list of the kexts contained in the EFI folder. Since this is going to be an online recovery USB that downloads Ventura from the internet during installation, we need to add an Ethernet driver. The PC I'm using has rtl 8 one g Ethernet, so I need to download the driver for Realtek 8 one You'll have to check the specifications of your own PC to see which Ethernet chipset your own motherboard uses. I'll put links to Realtek Gigabit, Realtek 2.5 Gigabit and Intel Ethernet drivers down in the video description. After downloading the driver double click on the zip file then go to release and you'll find the kext inside. This kext can then be dragged into the oc forward slash kexts folder of our EFI folder. Now if we switch back to OCAD we can see that the new kext was automatically detected and it's been added to the list under kernel. There are still two kexts in this list though, SMC Processor and SMC Super IO that have red dots next to them because they're missing. So we'll add these now. These two kexts are part of the virtual SMC package. Go to the virtual SMC GitHub page which will be linked down below and click to download the latest release version. At the time of making this video that's 1.3.2. Once it's downloaded click open file Navigate to the kexts folder and then you can select the two kexts, SMC Super IO and SMC Processor and drag them into your EFI folder. Switch back to OCAT, click on the save icon and OCAT should detect the new kexts and the red dots should turn green. Now we can go to this PC, open the boot partition, delete the existing EFI folder and drag over the EFI folder from our desktop to replace it. And that's it, the USB is ready to be used. Plug the drive into a USB 2 port on your PC. Make sure that your Ethernet cable is plugged in and that your PC is set to boot from USB first in your BIOS settings. When the PC boots you'll see the open core boot picker and you can select the recovery DMG icon to boot into macOS recovery. Once it's booted into recovery you'll see options to restore from Time Machine Backup, reinstall macOS Ventura to run Safari or to run Disk Utility. If you're installing to a new SSD then you'll need to run Disk Utility first to format the driver's APFS and then click reinstall macOS Ventura. Once macOS is installed I'd recommend creating a full offline install USB using Create Install Media in case you want to reinstall macOS in the future. I hope this video helped, if you have any questions put them down in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. That's it for now, thanks for watching.